Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a what they call finger and thumb pot holder. Now I've done various types of pot holder on my channel over the years. If you go to my channel and in the, in the search box once on my actual channel, if you type in pot holder, something should come up. I saw this idea on the internet and just thought it would be easy to do with the scan and cut. So I've created a cutting file and I'm just going to show you how to make it. So basically the supplies that you're going to need, you could make this from scratch, you could use all different types of fabric, it's entirely up to you. I'm actually using this Winnie the Pooh fabric which is available from makersuperstore.com. You're going to need, if you're going to cut it from all one piece, you're going to need a piece that's around about 20 inches long and I would say about 11 and a half inches wide. That will sit on your 12 by 12 mat comfortably away from the rollers. I've, I've just got two pieces of it here, I've got more than I need. But like I said, you could make it from scraps. You're going to need some Insole Bright or equivalent. This is basically a kind of wadding that is used for things like oven gloves and you know anything that you want to protect yourself from heat. I've had this years. I honestly can't tell you where I got it from. I'm guessing maybe somewhere like eBay or Amazon. You could probably pick it up in your cutting shops, but as we're still in a UK lockdown at the moment, you know, we can't get out to shops, but you, you should be able to find it online. And then just a piece of ordinary wadding. You don't need to use that. You could put two layers of insole bright. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so I've got my fabric mat and my fabric blade. If you've got a CM model machine, you can still make this project. You'll just need to have the high tack support sheet stuck to an old mat and then you'll be able to follow along. I'm just going to apply a piece of my fabric to my fabric mat and then just rub it down. I'm going to flip you over to the machine. I'm going to load the mat in to the machine and I'm going to put my fabric blade in the holder. I'm going to come to retrieve data from canvas and here is my cutting file. I'm going to save it into the memory of the machine, say OK, and then I'm going to delete a couple of the elements because my fabric has got a direction. I could probably get more pieces cut at once if I turned and rotated some of the shapes. But because of the direction of my fabric, I'm going to keep them all in the right orientation. So I'm going to select one of these shapes, hit edit and then hit delete. And I'm going to get rid of the other one for now. And then I'm going to say, OK, do a background scan and start. And then these three remaining shapes, I'm going to try and cut from this one piece of fabric. Then I'll go back and I'll call up the shapes that I've just deleted and I'll cut them on my second piece of fabric. I'm going to go into the wrench and just turn the background down a little bit so that I can see the shapes easier. And then just try and position the three shapes. So they all appear to look OK. I'm going to say OK, select and cut and start. So I'm just going to unload the mat and there are my first three pieces and this piece is what I'm going to use as the template to cut out my batting or wadding and my insole bright. So I just need to cut the other two pieces now. So I'm going to bring in my second piece of fabric, pop this on my fabric mat, smooth it down so that there's no air bubbles. Okay, so I'm going to go to retrieve data from the machine, just going to jump to the last page and call up the design again. Say OK to set it on the mat and then this time get rid of the three pieces I've just cut. So I'm going to select one of them, 
say edit, hit the trash. So now I'm left with these two pieces to cut from this other piece of fabric. Okay, so the largest piece, I'm going to use that as my template now to cut out my piece of wadding. And because it's a simple shape, it should be nice and easy to cut around. So that's the first one. And that one just fits on there, so that's handy. Okay, so they're all the elements. So the first thing that I'm going to do is sew these pieces. So I'm going to put these right sides together. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to sew along this straight edge. And then I'm going to put these two together, right sides together and sew along that straight edge. Okay, so I've got the two pieces. I'm just going to sew these with a quarter inch seam allowance. So that's one done. And then I'm going to bring in the next piece and do the same along this straight edge. Right sides together. Okay, so I'm going to open both pieces and press the seam allowance. Now you can press the seam open or you can press it to one side, but I'm going to fold them so they're wrong sides together on both pieces and press them. Now I did forget to say that for the bigger piece that I cut round for the insole bright and the wadding, you do need two pieces of this. Okay, so this is how you now put this together. So you want one of your big pieces face up. Then you need to bring in your top piece. And I'm going to put this one, I think, so that the Winnie the Poohs are facing down because I think when I flip it out, they should be on the outside. But it's not vital. And, you know, especially if you're using all different fabrics. But the, the, the important thing is that you have the fold towards the middle. So you've got all your open edges at the top and at the bottom. So I'm going to bring this one in now. Put the fold towards the middle so I've got the open edges you should have a gap here that's that's right then you want your top piece right side down so you're making a sandwich of all this then you want your insole bright whichever way you want to put it down I don't think there's a right and wrong way and then your piece of batting or wadding okay I'm going to bring in some clips and clip it all together you can pin it it doesn't really matter if you're confident at sewing and you don't want to pin or clip well you know do whatever's right for you I'm just going to put a few clips in it and then I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew round four sides so up the long side across this across here and back down here and leave the bottom open that's where it's going to be turned right side out and then just to make it easier I'm going to sew it from the fabric side so I can see that everything's lining up properly I can see that I've not clipped it properly there 
okay? So up, across, across and back down and leave this open. So I'm just gonna put it under the foot and start sewing without hopefully getting my hands in the way. Now obviously you have got a few layers, so just take your time and you might get a little bit of bunching. I'm stopping with the needle in the down position, so although the foot's lifting, the fabric isn't moving. So I'm just going to carry on. Just going to take it nice and slow. I'm going to stop at the corner and then pivot and come across. Okay, I'm going to take that out of the machine. So this is what I've got. So what I'm going to do, where it's shifted a little bit, I'm just going to trim away a bit of the fabric just to remove some of the bulk. I'm not going near the stitches. I'm just going to level up that bottom piece a little bit there. I'm just going to clip the corners. Again, keeping away from the stitches. So when you look at it like this from above now, you've got your wadding, your insole bright, and then your fabric. You want to get into the gap where the first piece of fabric is touching the insole bright, and then you're going to turn it right side out. Now take your time because you've got a few layers, but you know, as I always say with things like this, it will come out through the hole. You just need to jiggle it around and take your time. Don't try and pull it all out in one go. Okay, so I've flipped it out and I've poked out my corners. And basically how this is going to work, when you put your fingers in there and your thumb in there, the piece that's next to your hand here needs to be the insole bright. Okay, so that's how it's going to look. You've got one plain piece on the back and two, your two pieces that look like this, okay? You're going to flip this one over and you're gonna go back to the machine and sew across the bottom. If you've got a serger, you could serge this. I'm going to put it back under the machine and I'm going to do a zigzag stitch just for extra protection. Like I say, if you've got a serger, serge it. Or if you don't want to use a zigzag stitch, use a couple of rows of straight stitching. It's entirely up to you. trim up my threads, cut any of these stray bits of fabric and then I'm just going to flip this back and push out the corners. I use um, an old quite heavy ball tool embossing stylus. You use whatever you want just going to give this a quick, I've got a stray thread there that needs, just needs cutting, just going to give this a quick press and then I'll be back. And there it is all finished. So your fingers go in here, your thumb goes in there and you can pick up your pots and pans with it and you know protect your hands. So that's a quick simple little project made with some beautiful Winnie the Pooh. This is kind of like a bluey tealy grey colour, it's lovely. I'm going to make a few of these because I do use things like this in my kitchen. As I say on my channel I have made different ones over the years but this one I love. Um, you just keep it on the side, you could also put you know 
a warm plate on it or a pan or something like that it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be used for holding pots and pans but that's what they're designed for and I just think it's a, a, a simple design so the cutting file is available in my cutting file shop at applelover53.co.uk if you go to the shop tab you'll see a cutting file tab and the cutting file will be available in there for you to purchase if you want to as I say if you don't want to get the scan and cut to cut the fabric for you draw the design or cut it out in card and then place that as a template on your fabric and cut round it. Anyway, I hope you like the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I am trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. And YouTube are telling me that a lot of people that watch my videos are not subscribed. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't get my third. Nothing at all like that. It just helps YouTube know that, you know, you like the content and helps them push it out to other people. And also by giving it a thumbs up, that also helps as well. Anyway, that's today's project. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.